Konnichiwa, Yokoso, Sumimasen, Nihongo ga Hanashimasen. So I will continue in English now because, as I just said, I'm really sorry I don't speak Japanese, but I would like to give you all a very cordial welcome to today's event. My name is Margarita Calderon Peter. I'm the head of Boku International Relations, and I'm pleased to welcome you all cordially. Um, to this event that uh, should show the long tradition that Boku has cooperating with Japanese institutions. Our two countries, in fact, have a lot in common, not only the colors of our flags. Um, and so today we will honor our past collaboration activities and discuss options for the future collaboration. At the beginning, however, I would particularly like to welcome not only all of our speakers, and I will introduce them later before their relevant presentations, but I would also like to welcome the audience here in the hall, and if you would like to move a bit further, please feel free to do so. And I would also like to particularly welcome the audience listening to us via live stream, wherever you are in the world. And um, of course, I would like to welcome our honorary guests. First of all, our rector, Professor Schuldef Steindl, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Japan, Professor Mitsutani, and the co-chairman of the Committee for Issues of the Future Japan-Austria, Professor Matsal from the University of Vienna and the University of Kyoto. I would just like to give the floor now to those three speakers and um, for ask them for their words of welcome. And I would therefore kindly ask the esteemed Mrs. Rector, would you like to start, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, here in Austria, or good afternoon if you're watching us from Japan. I'm very happy to welcome you to our event on Boku and Japan today. Due to COVID restrictions, I cannot be on at Boku site at the moment, but I'm welcoming you from Austria, from Vienna. Uh, and especially, I would like to welcome His Excellency, the Japanese Ambassador, Professor Mitsutani, and Professor Kachiwara from Japan, Professor Kosaka, and Professor Uchiyama. Furthermore, the co-chairman of the Committee for Issues of the Future, Austria-Japan, Professor Matsal, and all Japanese and Boku colleagues joining us at Boku or online today. Ladies and gentlemen, how did it come about that we organized this event today? Well, it all started when my dear friend and colleague Wolfgang Matsal when he learned that I would take over the office of rector at Boku this year, sent me a photo from Japan. It was a photo he had taken on one of his many journeys through the beautiful landscapes of Japan. A photo with a kind of memorial plate situated in the Momichidani Park. This is the park with the wonderful, colorful trees and in autumn, which is very close to the famous Itsukushima Shrine near Hiroshima. And on this plate, Wolfgang Matzal had discovered the name of a Viennese professor, namely Herbert Aulitsky from Boku University. Professor Aulitsky, according to this plate, is said to have visited the park in the year 1974 because of a torrent control project that had been built after a natural disaster a disaster which had endangered the Itsukushima Shrine. And so says the inscription, Professor Aulitsky was full of the highest praise for the project. This is because the project strikes a perfect balance between preserving the natural beauty of the landscape on the one hand and engineering technical excellence on the other hand. Wolfgang and I were very excited about this highly official testimony of a cooperation between Boku University and Japan. And at a dinner with the ambassador, Professor Mitsutani, last autumn, we decided to look at this and other cooperations a bit closer. And that's what we want to do today. Ladies and gentlemen, today's event is part of the 150 year celebrations of Boku. 
And this year, we do also celebrate 30 years of cooperation with one of our partner universities in Japan, namely the famous Kyoto University. Furthermore, Boku has two other partner universities, namely the renowned Shinshu University and the also very well-known Kyoto Prefectural University. But this event should also emphasize that Boku, in addition to these three cooperation agreements, has many other connections to Japan via joint research and educational projects or student and staff mobility. For example, at the moment, two Japanese students are enrolled at Boku. And I'm very happy to say that student exchanges are slowly restarting now after two years of break due to the pandemic. So I hope that this event will also contribute to new project ideas and I'm looking forward to interesting presentations and discussion, discussions. And now I would like to hand over to His Excellency Professor Mitsudani. Okay, so sehr verehrte Frau Lektorin, Professor uh, Schulef Steindl, so it's, um, I'm sorry to, uh, we can't meet face to face today. So anyway, thank you for your arrangement. And Professor Mator, nice to meet you again. Große Ehre für mich. Und uh, esteemed professors from both sides, Austria and Japan. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to this historic event. I would like to congratulate Boku University and its leadership for its 150th anniversary and its 10-year cooperation with the Japanese universities. 150 years ago, Japan was just beginning to set its eyes on modernization. Japan sent the Iwakura mission to the United States and Europe in 1872 in order to gather the modern, then modern information so knowledges. The government of Japan enacted its first modern school system law in 1872 too. Therefore, 1872 marks another historical year for Japanese universities. My congratulations also goes to the fact that Boku University celebrates its 30th year of cooperation with Kyoto University's Faculty of Agriculture. Since then, Boku uh, since, since then, Boku University's collaboration with the other uh, universities in Japan has been constantly expanding, adding Shinshu University and Kyoto Prefectural University into its partnership. I do hope that today's discussions will bring forth more ideas and areas for collaboration with Boku and universities in Japan. Boku has focused on sustainability for a long time. It delights me that Boku is part of Satoyama Initi Initiative. Although sustainability has gained traction in recent years, it has always been an important aspect in Japan, namely to coexist with each other as well as with nature in a harmonious way. The Satoyama is the epitome of biocultural diversity as it represents the unity of culture and nature which in turn means diversity and the good quality of life. Research in this field will surely be the harbingers of the next age and therefore collaboration of universities in this field is essential for the future of humankind. Sustainability is now 
more than ever important as we fear the effects of climate change more intensely and of how much it affects our daily lives. Scient uh, scientific discoveries can change history and lead humanity into enlightenment, but morality must always be in hand with it. In this sense, research of sustainability is important in realizing how to harmonize the development side of science and the, uh, and the morality side of the human conscience. We often say a picture is worth a thousand words. But frankly speaking, I have learned through the past two years a face-to-face -face meeting is worth a thousand Zooms. A picture is never, been, uh, never better than the real thing. In that sense, a little bit so, so sorry today, we can't get together face-to-face -to -face in one room and so carry out a free discussion. But ladies and gentlemen, let's be optimistic. We will be surely able to visit each other soon. I sincerely hope that the students of, from Boku can visit Japan again this summer, since Japan is once again finally and gradually lifting its immigration restrictions with cautiousness and optimism. I wish the collaboration between Boku and Shinshu University, Kyoto Prefecture University, the Faculty of Agriculture of Kyoto University, and all other universities will re rejuvenate to before corona times and deepen their ties and ignite, please, and ignite synergy with other academic fields for the sake of humanity. The future is in your hands. Thank you. Dear Mrs. Rector, liebe Eva, <laughs> uh, distinguished ambassador, dear colleagues, Pro Professor Mitsutami is a colleague too. Uh, for several years, he was professor in a very famous Japanese university. It is a particular pleasure for me to be able to speak to you at this event. I myself have been closely connected to Japan for more than 30 years in university research cooperation and for several years as a visiting professor to Kyoto University too. Today, however, I'm invited to speak as the Austrian co-chairman of the Austro-Japanese Committee for Issues for the Future, which is set up by the governments of Japan and Austria. Our task is to organize annual scientific and diplomatic event on topics of common interest to our two countries. We have often dealt with uh, topics for which the Boku is of outstanding importance. Forest ecology, forest economics, nature conservation, avalanche safety, landscape protection, disaster protection, etc. During preparing these uh, conventions, I repeatedly came uh, in contact with professors from your university who made a valuable contribution to the scientific exchange between Austria and Japan. The committee, which was set up in 1990 by the two foreign ministers on Austrian side, at that time Dr. Alois Mock, was established and continues the scientific and artistic exchange oriented relations between Japan and Austria. These relations were established in the 19th century after the Meiji Restoration. Since then, numerous collaborations in life and social sciences have given testimony to the mutual interest in exchange of ideas and knowledge between our peoples. We live in different cultural traditions, 
but are united in our will to understand the wonders of nature, to improve people's living conditions, and to strengthen the relationship between men and the world around us. The fact that the relations between Austria and Japan play a special role is explained not only by the mutual cultural fascination, but also by the mutual respect that has always characterized these relations. Although there are obvious differences in quantitative terms, there are also many similarities in qualitative terms. Respect for nature, love for refined food culture, a certain tendency for the formal in public, but also in the cordiality of relations in private. Allow me to make a personal comment at this point. I do not only share many years of joint work at the law faculty of the University of Vienna with you, Eva Schulefsteindl, but also a common interest in intercultural and comparative legal exchange. They began with participation of Eva Schulefsteindl in summer schools on the social market economy in Hungary in the 1990s and have culminated in the cooperation between the universities of Vienna and Kyoto in recent years. Here, too, the cooperation goes beyond the formal and contributes to the personal development of everyone involved. In this sense, I would like to express my thanks to you for hosting this event. It reminds us of the scientific cooperation between the Boku and Japanese scientists and gives an impetus for deepening these relationships in our days. At the same time, I would like to express my hope that these relations will contribute beyond their scientific yield to deepening the relations between Austria and Japan and to strengthen the bond of friendship between our countries and their inhabitants, which is most important in times we are facing now. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for these inspiring words. And in order to start with a historic overview on Boku activities with Japan, I would thus like to introduce our next speaker, Professor Johannes Hübel, to you. He is head of our Department of Civil Engineering and Natural Hazards and head of our Institute of Mountain Engineering and will now take you back to the beginnings of Boku's collaboration with Japan. Professor Hübel, the floor is yours. Okay, many thanks. Uh, Magnificent, Your Excellency. It's a pleasure to have a look back uh, uh, in the history, maybe uh, not only 30 years, but some decades more. And so I just need a second. Or can I? Uh, so, okay, okay. Uh, where is it? Okay, so in the history and looking to Austria and Japan, uh, we do have a lot of similarities. And as you can see here, we have at least both countries are very beautiful and they have a lot of mountains. And of course, of these mountains, they have to face more or less similar problems. Where is this? Who is this? Feld, does it? Do you nix? Okay, okay. So, okay, these are the similar challenges we have to face. We do have, as His Excellency already mentioned, we have soil erosion, landslides, torrential floods and debris flows, avalanches. Austria is lucky we don't have tsunamis and earthquakes. And so we developed in the past similar approaches to the things. We have legislative measures, administrative measures, technical measures, and soil and bioengineering measures. And going back more than 100 years, there was a Henry professor for touring control and photogrammetry at our university who held lectures. And later on, he was awarded professor. But one of his main things was uh, to organize exhibitions. 
And I think so the first contact between Japanese and Austrian researchers were made at the um, World Exhibition in Paris in 1900, where uh, the Austrian side presented so-called dioramas with touring control measures that attracted Japanese uh, researchers and administratives. In his book in 1903, there was a known chapter on Japanese measures. And at that time, you know, there is no internet connection, so there must have been personal contacts to get the information from the Japanese side. And as you see, so some remnants of this, we have some uh, uh, glass plates um, in our archive, and these are touring control measures made in Japan in the beginning of the last century. Uh, <coughs> out of this first context, uh, Amerigo Hoffmann, an Austrian who uh, was awarded professor at the university later on, went to Japan, was invited to Japan to hold lectures on touring control. And between 1904 and 1909, at the Tokyo and that time Imperial University, holding lectures on Japanese Sabo works, designing Sabo control works. And because of his work in, in Tokyo, uh, a lot of students, uh, let's say six to 10 students, came to Austria in that time. I only want to focus on Kitaro Moroto and on Masao Akagi. Uh, these two persons, so Amerigo Hoffmann, it's still famous, it seems, in Japan, because on the Japanese Wikipedia you can find some, uh, some, some slides of, of him. And OK, I don't understand this, but I tried with Google Lens, and it seems to be correct. Um, and it was Kitaro Moroto who made a study visit at Boko in, between 1999 to 1912. And you can see his matriculation register of the year 99, where he enrolled in different lectures on silviculture, uh, uh, water engineering, torrent control, forest lodging, logging, and so on. And further on, he became first professor of the Sabo Laboratory of Forest Hydrology and Erosion Control at the Imperial University of Tokyo. And in the 30s, he visited again all his sites in, in Austria. And we have his... Uh, uh, travel di um, diary from, from that time, so what he, he, what he did uh, 20 years later after his studies in, in Austria. Uh, Masao Akagi came some years later to, to the Boku University, and he became uh, the first director of Tateyama Sabo office. Here's again his matriculation register of 1923, and he was famous for constructing and designing the overall, uh, overall Sabo plan for the Joganchi River, uh, which is uh, uh, on the list of World Heritage. And you can see this construction works. And there is a small museum at this site. And when I visit this area, I found this, uh, more or less, the scripts of uh, Professor Hauska from Boku University. It's in a, in a board written there. Uh, Eva Schulem Steidl already mentioned Professor Olitsky. This was sozusagen the other way around, who visited Japan in 1974. And uh, he, hold a, hold a, he wrote something about the comparison of Japanese and Austrian touring control. This is the one uh, memorial tablet of this already mentioned Momijidani Garden. And so I don't have to talk about this anymore. Uh, afterwards, it was Professor Hideaki Marui from Niigata University who made his, his PhD 1983 to 1986. And in that time, I was also studying at the Institute of Mountain Risk Engineering. And so in that time, we shared the only personal computer we had at the Institute. So we shifted between night and day terms and just to, 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 to write our PhD or master work. And afterwards, it was Professor Haru Nishimoto who sent me, who, who was interested in the life of uh, Moroto. Uh, there was a special project from Japanese side um, to get an, more or less an overview of the works of Moroto. And then he sent me some pictures um, like this. And these are the official, let's say, from the imperial uh, uh, 
uh, Ministry of Agriculture in former times, but now it's written in Japanese, net? so the, the site. So, and he came to me and said, oh, I want to visit all these sites. Net? And so it's quite hard for us now to find exactly that point he wanted to visit. And I, I, I took these pictures out of, of a lot of pictures because they are now in, the, in Ukraine. So it's war area at the moment. Um, uh, nowadays, uh, we have a lot of cooperations or the, uh, connections with uh, Sabo Society of Japan. Uh, but the International Research Association Interprevent and Japan is a member of this society since 1992. So again, about 30 years. Uh, and uh, since 2002, there were special uh, congresses also held uh, in Japan. It was Matsumoto, Niigata, and Nara. Okay, another thing is uh, that Again, quite a lot of years, 28 years of collaboration uh, was established between Yamaguchi University in Ube and the Department of Biotechnology and Institute of Bioproce Bioprocessing Science and Engineering with Professor Jungbauer, who should be uh, a member of, of this meeting. And uh, the, the, the main focus is led on ongoing joint research on process chromatography, joint publications, participation in annual UV mini symposium since 1994, exchange of students and uh, with a hub in Japan for Boku Bio Processes Engineering students. And the outcome is, uh, uh, as it's usual for universities, a lot of papers that has been published in, uh, in uh, high-valued uh, journals. So I think it was a short overview about historical background of this cooperation and many thanks. <laughs> so. Thank you very much, Professor Hübel, for this interesting presentation. It demonstrated clearly that BOKU has a long tradition of international collaboration with Japan, as you can also see from our next speaker, who currently is abroad herself and therefore joins us online, Professor Penka, Deputy Head of the Institute for Sustainable Economic Development. She will now showcase 10 years of Japan-Austria research on sustainable rural development which she carried out together with her colleagues, Professor Kosaka from the University of Tokyo and Professor Uchiyama from Kobe University, whom I also cordially welcome online today. And the floor is yours. We look forward to your speech, please. Thank you, Margarita. Good morning. Good morning. Ohio. Go Simas. I'm grateful myself for 10 years of personal experience with comparative rural development research between Japan and Austria. However, in fact, um, Boko Japan research on rural issues dates back much longer, as already has explained um, Professor Hübel. It also dates back to the late Professor Wolfgang Holzner, the former head of the Boko Institute for Integrative Nature Conservation, who had studied Japanese studies himself. He collaborated with Japanese scholars, but also with his friend, Sepp Hidinhardt, the former professor of Japanese studies at the University of Vienna. And um, Sepp Hidinhardt was also the president of the European Association for Japanese Studies. So a longer tradition that I can share with you today. However, I want to share you some slides um, that show commonalities between Japan and Austria and explain um, these motivation of generation of generations of Boko um, researchers in doing comparative research on rural development. I have prepared um, these slides together um, with Professor Kosaka um, at the University of Tokyo and Dr. Uchiyama at Kobe. University. I'm very glad to call them my long-term collaborators on sustainable rural development and natural resource management. So what are the commonalities that made these comparative research so worthwhile for us as social scientists? As um, Johannes Hübel already mentioned, uh, we have here two mountainous um, post-industrial countries 
um, they share um, similar processes of rural change. When we look back to the time of the war, uh, we see, for example, a strong role of cooperatives and collective action. And since 1995, when Japan became full member of WTO and Austria joined the European Union, we also see a common strong push for modernization, liberalization and globalization. This resulted in an increased productivity in food and timber production, an increased integration in global markets, but also an increasing demand for recreational services, biodiversity conservation and authentic food. And because of these similarities, uh, we can derive many lessons learned from comparative research. If you compare, for example, the Wachau in Austria on the left side and Noto Peninsula, we notice that in both countries, people appreciate landscapes shaped by centuries of human land use. They are core of their identity. Um, this is reflected in concepts like um, the cultural um, landscapes in Europe, or as um, His Excellency Ambassador Misutani already mentioned, Satoyama in Japan. And thanks to Pia Kininger, a former PhD student of me and Wolfgang Holzner, Boku is member of the International Satoyama Initiative. If we compare the rural areas in Japan and Austria, we see small structured fields, farms and villages, big shares of mountainous and forest lands, on the one hand, um, underuse, um, aging and depopulation provide potentials of revitalization by urban rural linkages. On the other hand, overuse and suburbanization um, call for green infrastructures like urban gardens or green corridors for recreation and cooling. In both countries, people link the quality of food, such as nishomacha, as you see here, um, people working on nishomacha, um, to the place of production, to the place, um, to the soil, to the climate, but also to the skills of the local people producing um, these food products. We did comparative research how producers try to protect their products within the sui generis legal systems of geographical indication. Certifications and quality labels like the GA label in Japan protect producers of niche matter or the European um, labels produce um, producers of the Wahau Amarille from fraud and guarantee consumers that the food products are it, um, actually come from those areas indicated um, on the product. We shared our lessons learned in publications on governance of geographical indications and place-based food. Beard wine terraces here on the left side or rice terraces, um, we see a similar nexus between food production, biodiversity conservation and identity. In our publications, we show what drives collective action for the conservation of um, wild animals and plants, but also the management of the rich biocultural diversity. Looking back at 10 years of comparative research on rural areas in Japan and Austria, we had many inspiring conferences, webinars, meetings, field trips and interactions. And we and our doctoral students benefited a lot from this very fruitful exchange. Many lessons learned were co-produced together with local communities, like as urban farmers here in Tokyo, or members of a soba cooperative that you see um, on, the, on the bottom of, of this slide. And when looking through my photos, I also found this photo featuring Wolfgang Matzal, who showed my husband around in his Kyoto during our family sabbatical in Japan two years ago. Summing up, um, we argue 
that rural areas shared similar development paths in the past, but they also share very ambitious future goals, um, such as the big transformation planned within the Sustainable Development Goals or the Green Alliance. Japan and the European Union see both sides working together towards climate neutrality by 2050 and the global biodiversity framework. As rural development scholars, uh, we have been involved in associated policy processes around the farm to fork strategy for fair, healthy and environmental friendly food system or the Meadri strategy for sustainable food systems um, and the ambitious goal, for example, to become carbon neutral um, in forestry, fishery and agriculture by 2050. So we see many pressing societal questions um, such as where do we need to intensify or to extensify land use um, for food, renewable energy, bioeconomy, recreation and conservation. What do we want to produce locally? What globally? And how can we involve? Um, sorry, how can we involve um, businesses, governmental organizations, civil society, investors into this? big transformation process. Therefore, we are looking forward to many more exciting collaborations in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Penka, uh, also Professor Kosaka and Professor Uchiyama for explaining us your findings. Now that we had a look on research collaboration, we would like to see which joint activities take place in our study programs, mainly in the doctoral school, advanced biorefineries, chemistry and materials. I therefore kindly ask Professor Rosenau, head of the Institute of Chemistry of Renewable Resources, to introduce his activities with Professor Kajivara from Shinshu University to us. Please inform us about it. Not as much. Ah. Uh, dear Ms. Rector, Professor Schulhoff Steindl, dear honorary guests, dear colleagues, dear friends, it's a, it's a very special pleasure and honor for me to speak to you here today at this festive event on the occasion of the 150th anniversary of our university. In the scientific field of chemistry of renewable resources and green chemistry, there has been a, a long tradition of cooperation between Boku and Japan, almost a quarter of a century. At Boku, this field is mainly represented by the Institute of Chemistry of Renewable Resources. And I would like to give you a little insight on the uh, history about the various collaborations and the people involved so you will see lots of phases, and I would like to present uh, to you one example in particular, the cooperation with Shinshu University. It all started, when I'm talking about the personal relation to Japan, when uh, Professor Uraki Yasumitsu was a young postdoc at NC State University in Raleigh, where my wife and me spent uh, some time of the PhD, and shortly afterwards, uh, we got to know Toshi Kawada in Vienna, where we met weekly in the Beethoven Stübel for carbohydrate meetings. So this, this pub does not exist anymore, but our friendship persists. And then uh, Professor Kajiwara, and I'm really happy to see you here, Kanji. Uh, he is one of the founding fathers of a, a conference series about cellulose chemistry, and he introduced us into the uh, group of core participants. And this led then to a cooperation on cellulose science, renewable resources, lignin with Kyoto University, uh, with uh, uni the University of Tokyo, 
and uh, with Shinju University, of course, and I remember our many talks about music, especially if it's worth listening to Richard Wagner and to modern music. Uh, and when we had this conference I mentioned in Vienna in 2005, I remember one particular event, and this was a musical event when uh, an, an Japanese Austrian concert with clarinet and organ when Hiroshi Kamitakahara and me uh, played some music together. So over the years, uh, at the Institute of Chemistry of Renewable Resources, all these collaborations have grown, and we had some visiting professors here, Professor Isogai from Japan, uh, Isao Wataoka from Kyoto Institute of Technology, uh, Professor Kawada from Kyoto Prefectural University, and uh, Toshi Takano from Kyoto University spent almost a year as a sabbatical here, and from all of these, or many of these collaborations resulted long-term collaboration between our groups. And since we are also talking about future today, this tradition of visiting professors will continue, and uh, we hope to be able to welcome Professor Jano this year as a visiting professor. You might know him, he is the inventor of this nanocellulose car which was presented during the opening of the recent Olympic Games in Japan. And also Professor Yuraki will spend his sabbatical here, and I hope that uh, Corona will not cross our visit plans. I think we are all convinced very much that the education of young people and the generation of the experts of the future is one of the most important and most noble a uh, uh, task of a university. And, and also here, there are several examples from cooperation between Boku and Japan taken from our institute. Due to time constraints, I cannot talk more about the people and the project, so I'm just mentioning the names. Yuko, she is now assistant professor at Shizuoka University, Takashi at Kyoto Prefectural University, uh, Mitsuha. Mitsuharu is a group leader at Bridgestone. Then Midori Takazaki, Keita Sakakibara, Makiko Inoki, they are all professors now at Kyoto Institute of Technology, Kyoto University, Tokyo University of Marine Science. And uh, Mabu Aoki, he just has finished his PhD at Shinju University and is researcher there. So now you have seen many pictures of, of former visiting professors and students, and uh, I'm particularly happy that almost all of them are connected with us today via live stream, and that the bonds we established are still intact. As I mentioned already in the beginning, there is a particular intensive and fruitful cooperation with Shinju University, mainly initiated through Professor Kachiwara and Professor Miura and Professor uh, Morikawa. So Shinju University is something topic-wise like the Boku of Japan, with a focus on uh, life sciences, on sustainability of renewable resources. It's mainly located in Ueda and Matsumoto City in the Japanese Alps. So this cooperation is driven mainly by two doctoral schools. On the one side at Boku, there is the ABCM, Advanced Biorefineries, Chemistry and Materials, with a roughly 30 uh, PhDs. Antje Potters is the speaker of this uh, school. And the people there, the PhD students, have to uh, go through a special curriculum, and this contains a compulsory excursion to Japan, where we visit three uh, universities, of course, Shinju University. And on the other side, there is the doctoral school, the so-called leading program at Shinju University with 10 new PhDs every year and an obligatory annual excursion to Boku with lectures, company visits, and so on. And also uh, there is uh, this uh, adjunct professorship which affiliates me to Boku University. And so after so much 
data information. I thought it's, uh, it would be good just to give you some impressions and to show you some photos of these activities. That's where you get the best insight. So of course, we talk about science. We have lectures and seminars, uh, talk about cellulose chemistry, fiber chemistry, and so on. And we are also particularly grateful for the support by the Center of International Relations of Boku, and I think this is the right point of time here also to thank Dr. Calderon Peter for this support and also for this splendid organization of the event today. And in Japan, we have hands-on experiences in the labs, learn about the topics of the PhD students there. We visit partner companies, as we see here, in pulp production, cellulose production, fiber production, or we learn about the history of paper production or about textile science, textile manufacture. So, but as central as this scientific aspect might be, getting to know each other better and uh, getting an understanding of the culture is perhaps even more important. So we learned, for instance, about Pokemon. We, of course, learned about Japanese traditional food, sushi, sashimi, and so on. But of course, also about different European kinds of cheese. Then we heard about European uh, history, former kings. We learned about tea and the art of tea ceremony, green tea. We learned about European Christmas traditions. But as chemists, I mean, we are more interested in practical approaches, in experiments, in demonstrations. And also here you should get some impressions. So Japanese fashion is best learned if you try it on. And of course, in turn, we showed some uh, Austrian fashion. We learned about music together. And evidently, there is some differences in the musical instruments. But music is best experienced if you play it together. And also, the dancing or trying the dances was a source of much fun and jokes. And there was, of course, these fundamental scientific questions. If it's possible to uh, just to get a blonde Japanese by dyeing the black hair, just by using uh, these dyes. And as a chemist, uh, if you are interested in the outcome, no, it's not possible. You just get a, a reddish brown. You don't get any further. He lost a bet, so he had to be the sample in this uh, scientific experiments. But there were also some, yeah, let's say, other non-scientific challenges. Sometimes the meal portions in Austria were, were almost too big. And sometimes the, the food in Japan was, was almost too fresh. And some drinks were too strange and too weird. And of course, there is this particularly strange habit of Austrian, especially Boku people, to go for hiking. And we are not just talking about some, some leisure strolls here. We are also talking about more serious stuff. You see Professor Miura here. But all these challenges were uh, really mastered very well on, on both sides. So what I would like to be understood as a, as a conclusion is that over time, at first rather casual acquaintances got very good colleagues, and in many cases, real friends. And, and here are just a few impressions from the last excursions to both sides. So we see that there is really a good relation between the people with wine, with beer, and don't ask me why, with some ketchup in the forefront. And this is the right uh, point, I think, to thank 
all our Japanese cooperation partners at Kyoto University, Kyoto Prefectural University, Tokyo University, but especially at Shinju University for the good cooperation, for, for the perfect hospitality over so many years. We always have felt very welcome. And it's true that we come from, from countries, from two countries which are several thousand kilometers apart. And of course, there are cultural differences uh, but cooperation is not just about science, it's about the people, it's about collegiality, it's about mutual understanding, it's about friendship. And in particular, the recent past has, has tragically reminded us how important this is. And this is why I would like to emphasize this aspect again. And uh, I would like to conclude here with once again extending my sincere greetings to, to all our colleagues who are connected to us with live stream and uh, say thank you for being such good colleagues and such good friends. And yeah, finally, I would like to, to thank you for your kind attention. And when I was asking Taka to write this sentence in, in Japanese, I hope it's saying uh, thank you for your attention and not something like I hate hiking or something like this. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you very much for this interesting summary of your collaboration. Now that we have heard about the historical background and up-to-date activities in research and education, it's time to start the panel discussion in order to develop ideas for future cooperation. I thus therefore invite Professor Hübel, Professor Rosenau, but also cordially Mr. Goto, a PhD student from Professor Rosenau here to come to the stage. And I also want to thank Professor Kosaka and Professor Kachivara for their willingness to join the discussion via Zoom. So um, we will start with some introductory uh, questions for the panelists, which I kindly invite to come over and take their seats. And uh, questions of the audience, of course, are also welcome. So if you in the room have questions, please raise your hand. We have microphones running around. And uh, for the audience who is listening to us via Zoom or live stream, please type your questions in the chat, and uh, we will take them up You're at a muted. later point. Um. I'm muted. Hmm. I'm not muted. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Did you get the introduction to the to the? Yes, yes, we did. We did. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, as I just repeat, in case the audience at the live stream or Zoom has questions, please type them in, and we will take them up at a later time. Um, and uh, therefore, I would like to start now with a question to Professor Hübel. In your presentation, you describe the broad spectrum of past activities between Boku and Japan. To your opinion, which activity could be considered as a highlight that would be worth being continued in the future? Well, I, I only can talk in my field of research because they, they know what's going on. And I think so. Um, the highlight is, uh, is more or less all what was dealing with kind of natural hazards. So, uh, especially touring control works and, and even forestry. So I think this is it's quite worth because there are a lot of damages in Japan and Austria. And so we, uh, in the past, we developed common concepts and we shared our ideas. And I think this would be worth to, to, to the, the way to proceed further on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I will now address Professor Kozaka in the Zoom. Um, research for Boku has always been a matter of international cooperation, as we are the only Austrian university to cover research and study programs related to natural resources and life sciences from the bachelor to the doctoral level. So could you please explain the reasons why you personally were interested in cooperating with Professor Penka and Boku? And is this supported by some research strategies or funding by Japan or your university? Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I think uh, Professor Penke has already explained that we have uh, similarities with um, 
a geophysical character that we have a very we are very mountainous countries and facing similar probably pressures from uh, global economy and therefore uh, we are in a similar setting of post industrial period uh, both in agriculture and forestry so i think that makes a lot of uh, sense for us to collaborate and we have a lot of um, comparison uh, German, Japan, but now the comparison with Austrian cases are increasing and gaining salience in the discussion as well because of these similarities, size of countries and others. Um, and also um, there are a lot of fundings as well. Um, we had the honor to invite Professor Penka uh, with an individual university basis at, in Nagoya in our case. But there are other frameworks uh, with JSPS or uh, national standards, and I, I'm aware that there are other um, EU level, for example, collaboration and others. So that would be quite interesting, I think, also in our future collaboration, uh, especially place-based products would play a critical role in both at the product level as well as the heritage level. So that would be my answer. And lastly, can I just mention one thing to Professor Hubel? that mm -hmm. actually the Sabo office is right above my office. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I was very surprised. I was very surprised that you were mentioning America Hoffman, et cetera. They're on the, right above me on the second floor. And I'm on the, the room 124, which is just beneath the Sabo office. But they thought of things, their names uh, to geoscience kind of things, more to global issues, but mm -hmm. their focus is, of course, one of the focus is this uh, disaster reduction, etc. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for this okay. opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, for Pro Professor Kosaka, for mentioning these additional linkages between our universities, which even we were not aware of. So thank you very much. <laughs> if we now move on to Professor Penker, um, which also joins us via Zoom, you have spent your sabbatical in Japan. From a very practical perspective, what are the biggest challenges for Austrian or Boku researchers planning to spend a research stay abroad? And which recommendations would you like to give fellow colleagues interested in doing the same that you did? Yeah, if you do not speak Japanese like me, the biggest challenge might be in housing and administrative procedures. And I have to say that I benefited a lot from the services of the Japanese embassy in Vienna in terms of visas, not only for me, but also for my husband, and my two sons, and the outstanding support um, by the international office and Professor Kosaker in, in administrative issues. Thank you again, Rio. Um, actually, I had a student um, who accompanied me um, on my first day in Nagoya um, to the board office. And there was also big support from the international office at Goya University. So we went um, to the world office, to the bank, um, and the international office of the university. And I'm not sure if this would have been possible in Austria, but we actually managed on one single day to open a bank account to register as, uh, as residents, me and my whole family. Um, to become part of the national health system and the national tax systems, everything in one day, and complement um, to the great government services um, uh, of Japan. And also very thankful um, and grateful for, for this um, support. And what was very important was also the housing provided um, from the university directly at, at the campus. Um, very nice environment and very convenient um, due to the short distance um, between the house and, and um, the office. Thank you again, Rio. Thank you for these interesting insights. I think this poses a high benchmark for Austrian authorities to manage all these registrations in one day. Um, well, let, this leads us to my next question, I think, because uh, Mr. Goto, you represent kind of the counterpart to Professor Penker because you came to Boku for your PhD studies from Japan. So according to your experience, did you face some difficulties in preparing for your stay or during your stay here? And 
Is there something that we from Boku could do to improve the situation for incoming PhD students? Yeah, thank you for the question. Maybe I can introduce myself briefly. Please. So I joined Boku at 2019 for in the field of green chemistry. And I'm working at UFT Trun about chemical compounds that stabilize cellulose during processing. And I did masters at Kyoto Prefecture University and my professor there, Toshi Kawada, is a good friend of Rosie and Anche. And so how this is how we got to know each other. Mm -hmm. And sometime later, when Rosie visited Japan, we met personally and discussed the topic and started to organize my stay. And when I started to prepare to come to Austria, there was some paperwork and Maybe this would be one difficulties that I experienced. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, but the paperwork for Boku was not very complicated. And Rosie, Anche, and our secretary, Christiane, helped me a lot. However, I had to, I had to get a visa Mm -hmm. in Japan to enter Austria, and it was quite hard and complicated. I needed a lot of documents with translation, mm -hmm. and I need to go to Austrian embassy many times, but you know, finally, fortunately, I, I came here. And that, this is one difficulty. And another thing, would be language, uh, especially German. But I must say, I don't have a big problem with German, I even I don't speak German. So here at Boku, I joined o Austrian Biorefinery Center Turin and ABCM Doctoral School. And there are many other people from outside outside the EU, and so the working language is English throughout. So there are no problem problem at all. Even uh, you don't speak German. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing is that I usually go to Mensa for lunch. <laughs> And <laughs> it's basically only in German, so <laughs> I cannot understand the menu. Then <laughs> I have to guess what is it and which menu I can eat so like this. Yeah, but it's fun, and of course I can ask my friends who speak German. So yeah, I actually I enjoy it. Austrian food. So when you ask me about possible uh, improvements, maybe Boku could advertise itself a little bit more. And so because uh, uh, well, I mean, Bo I contacted Boku through my professor in Kyoto, but I didn't know about Boku before. And I think the major topic of Boku in the field of renewable resources and sustainability are uh, 
also big topics in Japan. And maybe some students might be interested in doing a PhD here, but usually they don't know about Boku, or even they don't think about going abroad. Mm -hmm. So maybe Boku could do more advertisement to reach students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in conclusion, I enjoyed my stay very much. And also, I found many good friends at the institutes. Yeah, sometimes I miss Japanese food. <laughs> and actually, I don't like hiking. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I was really surprised that so many people like hiking in Australia. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, everything is fine. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you very, very much for this uh, openness and for sharing your thoughts with us. I'm, I'm sure that, um, of course, with regard to visa regulations, we can only assist in contacting also the embassies. Um, and for the Mensa, yeah, this is an ongoing topic <laughs> that we keep on um, uh, trying to improve and, and ask for English um, nominations of the food. Um, but uh, concerning the advertisement of Boku, I think um, this is an excellent suggestion that does not only re relate to all our professors who are collaborating with Japan uh, to help us to promote our university and our study programs when you are there for research, but I think that also our rectorate has just started a new initiative on, on advertising and marketing Boku better in order to attract more students to our university. So um, we hope that also this event today contributes to um, showcasing all our activities in Japan and at all the countries where you are listening to us. But I would like to continue in the discussion now and ask uh, Professor Kachivara from Shinshu University. A core element of the cooperation between your university and Boku always was education, either in the form of guest professorships or via the doctoral school that Professor Rosenau just presented. So why did Shinshu University focus on these activities? Why did you choose them exactly? Could you tell us, please? Yep. Um, I'm Kanji Kajiwara from Shinshu University. Um, I think I'm, I've known Professor Rosen now since the last century. The first occasion I met him in the occasion of uh, functional polysaccharide work, workshop that was held between the European and the Japanese side alternatively by each two or three years. And then, of course, uh, our common interest attracts us to be a friend. And as Rosie shown, we started the um, exchange program from 2006 or 2007. I'm not sure what, which year was it. And since 2014, is that correct? We got uh, some um, grant from the ministry of education in Japan, so-called reading postgraduate courses. The, that time, Japanese government wants to have more foreign students or to, to, for Japanese students have a college to go abroad and speak more freely with the uh, foreign people. So we organized the student workshop every year for five inconsequent years at Boku. So Professor Rosner organized those workshops as you've seen from the many pictures. Um, that's the, how we could continue this sort of um, collaboration, educational collaboration between the Shinshu and Boku. So the vital element is the support from the government. That's it's necessary for, for, uh, for us to continue this sort of uh, educational project. And now we are going to apply for uh, another scheme of so-called global expansion program uh, called by the, uh, again, 
Ministry of Education that suggests us to again to organize a workshop with the foreign universities and then uh, what we call cultivate our student to be a uh, more expand to the uh, abroad or we welcome the foreign student to Japan and so on. So the next subject will be on sustainability. So Boku is one of the most suitable targets to have a collaboration. And of course, personally, I'm very much interested in the renewable resources and Japan and Austria as a very common resources, natural resources. So um, scientific wise, our collaboration will continue without any effort. So that's thanks for Rosna, Professor Rosna, and we could send a many students as an intensive, and also we can receive many students from Moku. I will also briefly explain some options for, for funding um, in case you want to continue with other cooperation projects. But um, first, I would like to ask Professor Rose now, now, I mean, you explained already a bit in your presentation, but what was your main driving force to establish the cooperation with Shinshu University and Japanese colleagues? Why, why Japan? <laughs> uh, why why Japan? Uh, this depended a little bit on the, on the topic. Uh, Japan had traditionally a very strong uh, research in, in renewable resources in cellulose and lignin. There is a cellulose society in, in Japan and a lignin society, which is uh, something very rare. So this was the science. Uh, why Shinshu? I think. Uh, there is not a main reason, but, but several contributors. I mean, one thing is, of course, the, the scientific topic has to match in a way. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, on a, on a personal level, also it has to match. And very uh, good colleagues and friends are at, at, at Chinchu. And then there is also something like uh, what we would call the Boku spirit here. There is something like this. Uh, at Shinju University with the Shinju spirit. I mean, both universities, uh, in a way, concentrate on, on renewable resources, as I mentioned, on sustainability, on, on, on life sciences, and they, they are smaller universities, not the biggest one, but excellent universities. So they are, in a way, they are very much comparable. And these two, two spirits, uh, I thought they, they match very well. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, we, we always felt uh, very, very welcome at Jinju University. And it, it was just on a, how to say, on, a, on the same level. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a very nice and uh, a very yeah, fruitful cooperation. And I mean, it continues since what Kanji mentioned, since almost 20 years. And I think that's how it should be. Great. <laughs> so we hope it will also continue in the future, as we have now been uh, taking a lot of the past perspective into account. Um, I would kindly ask all of you and also the audience, um, uh, do you have ideas for the future? Uh, what is needed to continue and further develop the collaboration? What would you need as support from Boku? Or uh, which ideas do you have for future collaboration? somewhere already mentioned, but whoever wants to add something or raise a question with regard to future activities, you're cordially invited. Can I just briefly comment? Yes, uh, please, please. Yeah, well, J Japan has just started the um, uh, strategy for uh, the co-balancing the environment, the conservation and agriculture forestry activities, a new strategy. And in there, they have like a target for organic uh, agriculture um, and that kind of new uh, frontier. So that's definitely one area, I think, where Boku and Japan can collaborate. Thank you very much for this valuable idea. I hope that Professor Penka will take it up <laughs> and continue the collaboration. 
<laughs> I see her nodding. Are there other ideas, Professor uh, Hübel? Yeah, maybe because we've just founded a new institute that our department is about, let's say, green engineering and with uh, recycling products and so on. I think it would be also interesting for Japan to collaborate in this way of, of dealing with problems and um, also to use mainly wood as a, um, as a product for, for uh, like here in this room, no? mm -hmm. uh, to, to use it for, for buildings and so on. And so there's also an old tradition with wood uh, in, in Japan and with newer methods and new designs, maybe this could be an interesting topic for further cooperation. Great, thank you. So something before it comes to your end. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, may, may, maybe something not very scientific. Uh, it's it's a little bit in response to this reservation ab, uh, about hiking. <laughs> so our our, our next uh, ABCM uh, retreat will be in Leibniz in southern Styria, and this will be ma mainly swimming, not hiking. So it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> so soon you will be able to opt for a triathlon then. <laughs> it's only the bicycle that is still missing, I guess. This is an additional effect of our, of our doctoral schools, perhaps. <laughs> um, are there any other questions from the audience or? Uh, yeah, a remark, so no, no, because during the talks, I, all, I always heard it's Boku University. It's mm -hmm. the English term. And at the long term, we, we normally officially have to, have to use that. No? So it would be much more practical just to say Boku University in English. No? They're not the more applied life sciences and renewable resources and so on. Just, just a remark of this. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand that for speaking, it's much shorter. But of course, that's why we have it in the background, the University of Natural Resources and Life, life Sciences, WENA. <laughs> but when you're in a Congress, so so it's just easier, as we have heard today. Right? It's just have a short abbreviation of this. I, but I see that the, <laughs> our rector has a remark. I don't know if it's directly related to this comment, but please. <laughs> no, it, it's just a, a question. Um, I put it into the chat, but probably you can see it. Uh, I would have a question to Ambassador Mitsutani. What would you recommend for Boku students? Uh, what is the best uh, way to learn some Japanese? Um, and uh, another question maybe uh, to Professor Bank, uh, Professor Hübel and uh, Professor Rosena, are you giving online classes for Japanese students so together maybe with your Japanese partners? Um, so Thanks. Un thank you. Unfortunately, the ambassador already has left, but I would like oh, to pass I, I on I couldn't you. see that. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry, but I, perhaps Professor Matsai would be willing to yes, give an answer please. about learning Japanese. Please, the microphone is coming. Yeah, thank you very much. It is not easy to learn Japanese, and, <laughs> but there exist some online courses too to learn Japanese. But uh, the best way is to, uh, to cooperate with Japanese students on site in, in Japan. Usually they are very uh, supportive and they help, but, uh, but, but it's not easy. But let me just add one more suggestion. I, in the Committee of, for Issues for the Future, we are planning uh, a, a symposium on uh, wood architecture uh, by the end of this year. And I will uh, have uh, talk, talks with your rector uh, to invite some of the colleagues because uh, Japanese traditional architecture is wood-based, but modern architecture is uh, carbon-based uh, in steel and concrete. Uh, and maybe it will be a good chance uh, to, uh, to change architecture and based uh, uh, and Build high uh, buildings, even in wood, uh, on wood basis. Uh, we will try to organize a symposium on this in cooperation with Western Austrian universities mm -hmm. uh, and architects, but even with Boku architects. Uh, we try to organize it by the end of this year. Sounds very interesting. I'm sure we look forward to that. But I think there was the second question of the rector. Would yeah, you yeah. like to start? Please? I have to say no from my side. <laughs> <laughs> no online teaching. No, no, no online lectures for Japanese students at the moment. So because we, we don't have any Japanese in our field at the moment here. 
so it's a pity, but uh, maybe in future we have more possibilities to cooperate again with some Japanese universities. But there are a lot of Japanese universities dealing with problems of, let's say, natural hazards. And uh, at the moment, I really don't know which uh, which university we should cooperate because I think more in the north there it's more with avalanches in Kyoto disaster or the, uh, uh, Tsukuba, I think there's also one 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 university here, disaster prevention <laughs> institute so there are a lot of institutes and so at the moment I really don't know who, who are the persons we can contact in that way I see so then the question goes on to Professor Rosenau perhaps and yeah. later to Professor Penker, who I see is also raising her hand, yes. Um. I, I think uh, before Corona, uh, it was, uh, nothing was online. So the, the exchange of these excursions was going on uh, once or twice a year, and, and I have been going to, to Japan once a year for, for lectures, but then through Corona, everything was changed, and then it was more or less automatically that uh, everything was done online. So this works pretty well and is, was more or less normal. So and, but of course, we hope to, to go back to the yeah, to uh, the situation as it was before Corona, so that we can see each other personally again. So then the floor is for Professor Penka, who was also addressed. Yeah, I was attentively listening um, to Professor Rosenau and, and operations on PhD level. I think here is a lot of potential um, thinking of the doctoral school of social ecology or the doctoral school transition to sustainability. For bachelor and master, there might be a, a challenge because the academic year in Japan and most universities starts in April. So we have um, a different timing. Um, yeah, in terms of online teaching, um, I don't see any, any difficulties. Uh, we have switched very smoothly from, from our planned face-to-face -face conferences to webinars that we organized together in the pandemic time. So this was... Um, very fruitful exchange. Nevertheless, I, I'm really think of doing excursions and people meeting face to face, um, having cultural events, um, listening to music together, singing together as we experienced also on the Noto Peninsula. I think um, this is something that I'm looking very much forward to. Thank you very much. I think Professor Marzal also wanted to add something to this as aspect. Yes, thank you very much. To, to my experience, it was quite easy to teach online before Corona times. But within Corona times, the tax authorities in both countries got in a certain way jealous uh, and uh, prohibited de facto uh, online teaching uh, in paid terms. So to my opinion, all rectors in both countries should, uh, should uh, try to uh, get waivers should try to get exemptions of tax law in order to uh, promote online teaching on an employment basis. Uh, this is, to my opinion, very important for the cooperation in future. Yes, I totally agree with you. And it does not only relate to Japan, obviously, but to all other countries. And I, I know that there have been already discussions at the level of UNICO, the Austrian Rectors Conference, but I think it's still an unsolved problem. So. Yes, so thank you very much for mentioning that. Um, I also have taken now a question from our live stream uh, guests, uh, from a student in the field of landscape architecture. And this student is interested if there are possibi uh, possibilities for cooperation in this direction of landscape architecture. So what opportunities are there for Boku landscape architecture students interested in Japan? Well. Um, a bit later on, I will uh, showcase the scholarship options that Boku offers for outgoing and incoming students. Um, but there is also, um, of course, our collaborations with Kyoto University, where uh, we have a lot of uh, joint activities that started in yeah, the area of also rural development, nature conservation, and, and uh, might be therefore also interesting for landscape architecture. If, if I may also join, that, Please, um, yes. my lab lab is also uh, a landscape planning lab. So she, he or she is definitely welcome to visit me at the University of Tokyo. 
uh, and we, we try to um, approach the landscape issues um, with the with this product uh, product level as well as this landscape level, and collaboration with other forestry agricultural um, disciplines. So we're very much into multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary approaches. So. Um, and of course, there there will be a lot of uh, funding opportunities as well, both from national and and um, our individual university basis as well. So, I think the first thing is to contact uh, the key persons at the each I I institutions from the students level. Thank you. Thank you very much, and um, perhaps this even gives uh, room for another joint uh, cooperation agreement between our two universities, which we do not have at the moment, but at BOKO there is always the rule that two departments should be interested in such a cooperation agreement. So I'm sure that Professor Penka might be interested in supporting, and if some other colleagues would also like to join, please let me know so that we can discuss uh, it and uh, present it to our Committee for Internationalization and our Rectorate for final decision on future cooperation agreements. Because of course we hope to intensify the cooperation with Japan also um, and would be a nice result of today's event, basically. Are there some other questions? Yes, please, here in the hall, I have a colleague with a question, and the microphone is coming. <coughs> so, hello to everyone. My name is Matsukawa. I'm maybe one of the few students uh, supposing uh, coming from Japan and studying started uh, from bachelor and master did master both at Boku University. Oh really? Mm -hmm. So uh, I have uh, w want to mention two points. Uh, first, uh, uh, I had, for example, master uh, students who wanted to do uh, international master at Boku, and she tried also more than one year uh, with, with paperwork, and so finally she uh, gave up. So, of course, Japan, as uh, colleagues have mentioned, uh, bank account in one day, the service is perfect, and if they ca contact with Austrian, uh, then it's, they feel the difference. So, uh, of course, uh, although they speak uh, they have a uh, proficiency in well English skill. They uh, had uh, some hurdles, so the challenges to to make this paperwork. So, um, yeah, the study service more study student oriented way uh, to communicate a uh, supporting way. This could help to motivate more students, master students, for example, to come mm -hmm. uh, to Boku. Yeah, with paperwork, I mean the notification or sent originals, and it was also the problem with Corona. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of challenges. Second point which I want to mention is the language which uh, Rector mentioned. Uh, if I could work, I finished my master, so if, if I worked here, I could of course give an, uh, Japanese lessons, uh, but uh, Volkshochschule uh, or University of Vienna, they also offer Japanese courses. And thirdly, personal communication, this could also help because there are uh, several thousands in, uh, Japanese living in Austria. So there's also a Japanese society in Vienna. So to contact this place and uh, ask for Japanese language help, this could also help. Thank you. Thank you very much for this valuable and um, important comment. Of course, we are aware that um, registering for a study program always requires a lot of paperwork and uh, that there are, um, um, of course, some hurdles. And um, yeah, we are sorry that your colleague couldn't make it to us, but perhaps um, it will be possible for a later study at doctoral level, like for Mr. Goto. Um, and concerning the language office, thank you very much for showing that to us. At Boku, we also have tandem language network so that um, students who want to teach their mother tongue to other Boku students can pair up and match and, and give their um, language teaching on a bilateral basis or on a, in a smaller group basis. So um, if students are interested in this offer, please contact us at Center for International Relations, and then we will coordinate and try to find matches even for languages that are not offered in our regular language courses. But I see that there is another question from the audience coming up, please. Uh, yes, 
Thank you for this interesting contribution. And yes, you are right. We, of course, have certain limits before we can open a language course. So if we have less than 12 students interested, unfortunately, we can't start a new course. But perhaps this event contributes to raising the interest for Japanese. And um, I know we have been in touch before the event today. So I have your address. And in case that some opportunities come up, either for needs of translation to Japanese or something else, I will definitely contact you again. Concerning your question on sustainable cities and the eco-fuel town of Toyota, um, perhaps we don't have somebody from our Institute of Transport Systems here today, but um, I don't know if Professor Penka perhaps wants to mention something about sustainable cities or um, uh, some other colleagues, but otherwise we can put you in touch with our uh, institutes working on this topic. Uh, we have um, worked on sustainable cities, on um, green infrastructure, so urban gardening, um, landscapes, um, green corridors for cooling and recreational services, conservation, and urban people engaging in, in nature conservation. So I'm, I'm not um, aware of this Toyota um, Eco um, uh, urban um, project, but maybe we or you are, I'm not sure. Yeah, Dr. Uchiyama might be able to comment. He's an urban uh, planning expert. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's a great honor for me to join this ceremony, and I'm now working on the research on the urban ecology. And yeah, and I think it's a kind of interesting discussion, and I think there. Are many potentials to make the city more sustainable based on the um, local context. And now uh, I think the experiment of Toyota company is uh, uh, maybe a bit like introducing a very new city in, um, in relatively vacant areas. But I think we can, um, enhance the awareness on more culture or ecological background of the Australia and Japan urban areas, then um, that might be another way to think about more sustainable cities. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there some other questions? Not, I don't see any questions in the Zoom or in the live stream, then I think um, I want to thank again all the 
participants to this uh, plenary discussion. Are there any cl special closing remarks, something you still want to add to this future ideas of collaboration? Professor Hubel. So maybe from the from our department side, so we, I think there would be a lot of ideas for corporations, and so we have just to find another department, or uh, to Did start you? with some corporation. Maybe this would be a new item we have to to follow in the next month. Please, yeah, would be my pleasure to support mm. and assist. Just one final remark, if I may. Yes, please. Yeah. One of the issues in this uh, new strategy by the agriculture ministry is making spirits from the woods. So mm -hmm. how how it would you know that, that's a, I think I thought interesting because the wood construction uh, housing is one thing and organic agriculture is another and and one of the item is uh, making spirits or maybe a little bit like wine from the wood by uh, I think one of the chemistry experts can help us or collaborate with us and the other challenge is uh, we don't have enough barrel for uh, whiskey. Mm. So that's one of the challenges, actually, that uh, are, we're f trying to uh, address in the forestry. Um, but we're, you can see the forestry science is also approaching the food aspect. So that's kind of a quite interesting aspect that we could also bring about in the next term. Thank you. This sounds very interesting, and I'm sure that our colleagues from the Institute of Viticulture and Enology, as well as our colleagues from the Institute of Wood Technology, would be highly interested in contributing and particularly product testing. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure that there will be options to explore this idea further in the future. And <laughs> thank you very much for this interesting suggestion. Um, so. Um, as I said, I would like to thank the uh, uh, panelists for their contribution uh, to these questions. And in order to give you all some background information on funding options and scholarships, um, the last point of today's event will focus on opportunities to finance mobilities and cooperation in research or educational projects. So if I may, I will briefly move on and present that to you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, yes, this is my presentation indeed. So I'm um, pleased to give you a very short overview on funding options for um, mobilities and also for project funding. Let's start with the scholarships and fellowship options. I um, have to say that this list does not include uh, scholarship offers of the different regions of Austria, nor scholarships for a full degree program abroad, like the Honjo International Scholarship Foundation or Rompaku or Erasmus Mundus scholarships that are available for interested students coming to our uh, Erasmus Mundus master programs here. But it's rather focusing on, on shorter mobilities of up to one year. Um, so if we start uh, at master's level, for instance, uh, if we have an exchange agreement with partner universities overseas, uh, students, both incoming and outgoing, could apply for a joint study agreement to spend a study semester or maximum yeah, a study semester abroad and uh, take courses at the partner university. Another option is the so-called QVI, uh, which is the abbreviation for Kurzfristige Wissenschaftliche Arbeiten im Ausland, or so short-term scholarship for research abroad. Um, this can be applied for for outgoing mobilities, either at master level or at doctoral level, or even at scientific staff level, in case you want to prepare some research for your habilitation. Um, it starts with two weeks to a maximum of seven months abroad, depending on the level that you're applying of. And um, so um, this would be another alternative. If a master student wants to do an internship, there are several student organizations like ISEC, EISD, IIS, or others who help us in um, organizing and um, awarding uh, or organizing these internships. And of course, there are also uh, scholarships from the Japanese government, uh, both for outgoing students from Boku to Japan, but also for incoming students like the Mombuka Kagushu scholarship. Um, these two last scholarships are also available at doctoral level. 
And in addition, uh, at doctoral level, we also usually start with uh, Erasmus International Mobility. This is, again, a program that is based on agreements between two universities, so one always has to apply uh, one year in advance for funding, and in case it is uh, provided, we can f finance either mobilities of doctoral students who want to take courses or do research abroad, or come to us for the same purpose. We can also fund uh, scientific staff mobility for teaching activities at the partner university. And what I particularly like of this program is that they also fund uh, administrative staff mobility or also um, just mobilities for training because um, I think administrative staff are sometimes a um, neglected group in these uh, scholarship activities, but I think they're of real crucial importance because it's um, highly relevant that administrative staff get to know the partner university and see how it works up there and, and therefore um, yeah, contribute to, to this welcoming atmosphere that is needed at every university and, and uh, help to uh, facilitate the exchanges and the uh, uh, mobilities in the future. So in addition for doctoral students that want to go to Japan, there are scholarships from our government like Marietta Blau or also uh, the already mentioned Japanese government scholarships. And for incoming students, we also have Ernst Mach's uh, scholarship worldwide. By the way, it's quite interesting that all these Austrian scholarships are named after Austrian physicists. I don't know why physics is so important for naming scholarships, but um, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting <laughs> to see that. <laughs> Um, if we move on to scientific staff level, in addition to the scholarships that have already been mentioned, there is, as already has been mentioned in the presentations, the GSPS uh, International Fellowship for Research in Japan. Um, and uh, for incomings, we also have the Lise Meitner scholarships from our research fund. If we now move on to the research level, I would like to present a slide that has been prepared by uh, Diploma Engineer Elisabeth Denk from our research office, um, who is in charge of supporting all researchers' activities and research projects. And uh, she also highlighted uh, fellowship options. So for incomings, there is this Marie Skodowska Curie Action European Postdoctoral Fellowship. Um, that funds researchers that want to spend one or two years in Austria, and the next application deadline is in September, so um, it's still time to prepare, and you're cordially invited to contact your counterparts at BOKU to prepare for these scholarships in case you're interested. And there is also the Esprit Career Advancement for postdocs um, that fund uh, research activities. And this one is uh, possible to apply for on a rolling basis, so there are no deadlines. Um, for outgoing mobility, uh, Elizabeth also mentioned the Global Postdoctoral Fellowship, um, which are also for a longer period of two to three years. And um, they include also a mandatory return phase to reintegrate the knowledge gained abroad at the home institution. And here again, the call deadline is in September. And of course, there's also this Erwin Schrödinger Fellowship um, that also promotes uh, research work abroad, basically worldwide. So you can submit and apply for uh, any time you're interested. In order to fund research projects, um, uh, the FOF, the Austrian Science Fund, uh, and the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, GSPS, uh, will soon open up again a call for bilateral Austrian-Japanese joint research projects and joint seminars. Um, so it's foreseen uh, that next year there will be a next application round. Uh, this gives you time enough to prepare so please uh, contact your fellow colleagues and, and think about it. Because Horizon Europe, of course, is the funding program for research projects, but uh, participation of Japanese institutions is on only possible at their own costs, unfortunately, because Horizon Europe only, in exceptional cases, covers funds of um, those partners, I'm sorry to say. The situation looks a bit brighter if we think of educational projects. 
So in case you're interested in capacity building projects, um, Japanese and European partners could work together. Um, there are three different strands in this program. The first one is um, fostering access to cooperation in higher education. This is rather targeting newcomer institutions that have no experience with European projects so far. So it rather is um, uh, perhaps not so suitable. Uh, it would be more interesting perhaps to focus on strand number two, which is partnerships for transformation. Um, these projects focus on modernization of higher educational institutions and also modernization of curricula, uh, of uh, learning um, materials, modules, whatever you have in mind. Also doctoral schools could be an option perhaps. Um, this, and the last one is structural reform, which aims at a bigger context where also national authorities have to be involved. A smaller scale of Erasmus projects is cooperation partnerships. They are basically meant to increase the quality and efficiency of European education systems. So it's rather an exchange that could help us here at Boku to internationalize our curricula, perhaps. Um, the, there, as for the previous program, the next deadline will be in 2023. Um, so there is still time to prepare some interesting applications. The Jean Monnet actions are usually uh, focusing on promoting the European idea in the broadest sense um, to um, uh, worldwide. So there are different uh, categories of Jean Monnet action, like modules, which is in case you want to offer just kind of a summer course or a joint lecture together. Um, and the bigger thing is, of course, the network, where you could focus on uh, higher education and EU issues. Um, and last but not least, um, because Jean Monnet also has just a deadline in the next year, there is still one program line in Erasmus that has a deadline this year in September. Um, these are the Alliances for Innovation. Um, and um, they might be particularly interesting for those colleagues who are interested in collaboration with enterprises because uh, they allow for alliances between um, educational institutions and enterprises uh, want to promote innovation in tertiary education um, and uh, the collaboration. And in case you want to focus on a specific sector, there are also alliances for sectoral cooperation. Um, uh, and for instance, this year the priorities were the agri-food sector, renewable energies, social economy, civil engineering, tourism. So there are a lot of topics that are um, applicable to Boku areas of competence. And um, therefore, this might be also an interesting option to collaborate. And uh, last but not least, in case you are interested in any of these programs or scholarships, please don't hesitate to contact my team and myself. Um, I'm, we are always there to support uh, Boku scientists and our partner universities in their interests for um, uh, collaboration. And um, <coughs> basically, this we are reaching the end. But before we come to the closing words of our rector, also, also as a moderator, I would like to thank all our participants in the room, all our participants online via Zoom and via the live stream, uh, particularly our honorary guests, the rector, Professor Masal, and um, the ambassador, although he has already left, as well as our online speakers, Professor Penka, Professor Kosaka, Professor Uchiyama, and Professor Kachivara, and the ones in the room, of course, Professor Hübel, Professor Rosenau, and Mr. Goto. And I would also cordially thank all the colleagues from the event management team from Boko IT and media support and from my team who supported us in organizing this event. And I would like to give the floor now to our rector for the closing words of this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear Dr. Calderon Peter for guiding us uh, through today's event uh, so perfectly and for showing us uh, the various opportunities we have to, um, to foster our uh, common collaborations. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have uh, really learned a lot of interesting things to, uh, to, today. 
about Boku and Japan and about our common research interests. And we have shared our experiences as researchers, students, and found many new ideas for future plans of collaborations. And I can assure you that Boku will do its very best to continue and deepen these strong and fruitful relations with Japan. As you probably know, ladies and gentlemen, our motto for this year is featuring future. This is because Boku celebrates its 150th birthday this year. And we have all the competencies that are needed to be fit for the future. Since we have been researching on these topics for a very long time, in 1872, Boku was founded as a small agricultural and forestry university, and today it has developed into one of the leading life science universities in Europe. And we will celebrate our, our anniversary properly. The highlight of this year will be our future conference on May 24th, 25th in Vienna, and I'm sure it will be streamed online also. And at this conference, we want to deal with many exciting topics that are very relevant for all of us and that show what diverse competencies Boku University has. I just want to mention three examples. Issues of food security, climate-friendly mobility and the challenges of energy transition and more generally the question of how to shape the living spaces of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I cordially invite you to this future conference of Boku University. But now I would like to thank all our guests and speakers for joining us today and for all your valuable inputs. And special thanks again to Dr. Calderon Peter for perfectly organize, organizing this event and also lots of thanks to our technical team. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and watching today's live stream and for your interest in Boku University. All the best to you and greetings from Vienna University. <laughs>